Okay. So please, um, next slide, please. For people who are on, you can go to this URL and then you can access the slide. slide. And I would really appreciate it if you could uh, open the dashboard link that is part of this link here and then register yourself in the dashboard so that I'll see how many edits are made at the end of the session. Okay. So what is in store for today? Next slide. So this is uh, a full hands-on session, but I realized um, I still need to do a very brief introduction to lexicographical data. Yeah. So I'll try and do that in the next 10, 15 minutes most, so that we can use the rest to actually get to the fun parts and get our hands dirty and do something. <laughs> so um, I would also briefly mention um, a very interesting project around Lexing that the Dibandi with Media and User Group did some two years ago. And I'll allow one person from the user group to showcase that. So, um, yeah. Again, my colleague didn't introduce herself. So please tell the audience who you are. I'm Hamid Rukaya. Username Ruki Wolpini. I'll be taking part or doing this presentation with. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Okay, let's I have a simple question for all of us. What is the combined number of languages of African languages spoken in this room? Let's see. So there's Tagbani, there is Hausa, what else? There is Yoruba. Yoruba, Luganda, Luganda, Swahili six. Uh, yeah. Seven. Um, okay, yeah. Arabic is on the um, English. Well, well. Somehow. <laughs> okay. So I think we have seven languages. That's awesome. Um, next slide, please. So why do languages matter? I'll start by just putting some ideas into your mind. And I'm going to read a few quotes. So next slide. Now, according to UNESCO, uh, there are 6,000 spoken languages in the world, but more than half of them are endangered and likely to disappear in the next few generations. And they published the statement on their websites um, on safeguarding endangered languages. And it reads, every language reflects a unique worldview with its own value systems, philosophy, and particular cultural features. And it goes on to say that the extinction of a language results in the irrevocable loss of unique cultural knowledge embodied in it for centuries, including historical, spiritual, and ecological knowledge that be essential for the survival of not only its speakers, but also countless others. I have another quote from one of my favorite um, Kenyan writers, Nguji, who says that every language is a world, and without translation, we would inhabit parishes bordering on silence. And one more quote, the last one, <laughs> by Lauren Johnson, who is um, is an Australian uh, journalist who did a lot of work in the, abor the Aboriginal communities. She says, a language becomes extinct when its native, when its last native speaker dies. And it's usually the, the result of its speakers shifting to a lingua franca, like the dominant languages of the world. This implies choice, but it's often a, his a history of marginalization that leads to this change. 
So um, still according to UNESCO, these factors play a significant role in assessing the vitality of a language. Amongst them, you know, the, the passing down of the language from one generation uh, to the other, and, you know, the number of speakers of the language, um, how the language is used in various domains, availability of the language in various languages. So most importantly, I've skipped a few, but the last one, the amount and quality of documentation available in that language. I agree that we don't have the power of governments to influence policy or decision in any big substantial way. And we can't go knocking on people's doors and asking them, why aren't you teaching your native language to your kids? <laughs> but there are some things that we can do within our capacity as Wikimedians, particularly, we can write in our own languages so that these languages are visible on the internet. And we can also, you know, use Wikidata to create and improve the quality of documentation in our languages. Again, these are, these look like very basic things, but I think they are really fundamental and they are within our capacity to be able to participate and contribute. So that brings me to lexicographical like, data. And I would like just a slight show of hands. Who here is hearing this word, lexicographical like, data, for the first time in their life ever? Okay, that's great people. Okay, that's fine. So, what is it about? What is like graphical data and how did we get here? By the way, who here doesn't know what Wikidata is? Doesn't. Everyone knows what Wikidata is. Awesome. So, how did we get here? Um, until 2018, so Wikidata started in 2012, and from 2012 to 2018, all that we did was to describe concepts, you know. But after 2018, we decided to add a new layer of descriptions to a new namespace called the lexicographical data namespace. And this includes words, phrases, and all of the parts of speech that you can think of. Um, so collectively, this is what is referred to as lexicographical data. Next slide. And so, oops. <laughs> okay. So you might be wondering, we have items on Wikidata, and now we also have lexemes on Wikidata. What's actually going on here? What is the difference between the two? Um, so items allow us to describe concepts. You know, concept like you have a mouse, and that concept would have a QID with certain statements that describe what it concept is. So things like the instance of um, species of an animal, it would describe the taxonomy of the animal. There could even be an image and an external ID linking the item to um, a third party knowledge base where you can go on and find out more about what this concept of a mouse is all about. Now, with um, Lexemes, we're actually describing the part of speech, mouse, and not the concept, mouse. These are two different things. So the part of speech is how the mouse is used in normal language. So for example, if I say mouse in a sentence, it could mean a computer device, it could mean mouse, the animal, the, the rodent, it could mean um, an adjective. It could mean so many things. So these are the senses of the word mouth as used in a part of speech. So items on one hand, 
describe concepts. Lexemes describe parts of speech that is used in a language. That is the big difference. Um, and so a typical lexeme on Wikidata would have these core features. First of all, it's going to have a lemma. We are all used to the to the to labels on items. So on lexemes, they have a, a lemma. And this lemma would usually be the standard form or the root word. Then it would have a lexical category. So the lemma could be a noun, it could be an adjective, it could be a proposition, it could be a proverb, it could be any part of speech. And of course, it would have a language. And then it would have statements as well, just as we have on items. And then it's going to have senses. So again, senses are the different meanings that you know a particular word could carry. And of course, it's going to have forms. The forms are the grammatical features. Um, <laughs> so people who know some linguistics find these things like are very comfortable with them, but many the average people don't. But it's not a problem. Once you start doing something, you get you get it. Um, you get understanding. So the forms are usually the grammatical features that are used to describe the word. So for example, run the English word to run. A grammatical feature of it could be the, the present tense of the word, which is run, R U N, sorry, run, R U N N I N G. It could have a past participle, first person, past participle, which would be run, also R U N. So these are the grammatical forms of it, the singular, the plural forms of it. It could have um, agglutinations in other languages, like in the brand new, we have um, what we call them, um, what's it called again, the grand speakers. You know when you have the apostrophe on a word? Uh, no. Uh, uh, inflection points. Yeah, they, they are called inflection. So these are all grammatical features that a word could assume. Let's take a practical look at an example like saying on the next slide. So this is the English word mouse, which is a lexeme. And the lexical category of this word mouse is a noun. And you can see it has some the very basic statements. And um, it has um, a usage example, how the word could be used in this context in a sentence as a noun. And another example in the next slide is a definitely word, jiao, which um, will have several meanings. One of the meanings of this word, so one of the senses, is that it means smell, jiao. Next slide. The same word, jiao, in another context, could actually mean a storm. Okay, and the same word, Zhao, would actually mean the color red in the band. So these are the three different senses of the word Zhao in the band. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, the English word, walk, as a verb, um, it has you know, different grammatical features, as I mentioned earlier. So why is this interesting? Why is this important? It's like, first of all, the, the um, lexemes are structured. They are structured data, which means machines and humans can read them. And that also means that you know, we can build tools on top of this data. Researchers can use that data to have a better understanding of the language. But also what is important is that, like seems like the whole of Wikidata have a CC0 license. And this CC0 tag means that, um, imagine you have um, an intellectual feast and you invite everyone to come and participate and no one has to pay anything to use it or even cite 
or reference where you got the, the data from. That is what C in zero means. It's out there open to everyone to be able to use. And of course, there's a huge community around it. It means the data is constantly improving. Like seems are getting better over time. And um, on the next slide, I try to um, to answer this question that people might have. But we are talking about words and dictionaries. But don't we already have dictionary as a Wikimedia project? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yes, that's true. But the fundamental difference is that I will start with the TC0 because I think you can remember that. Yeah. Wiktionary is licensed under CC by SP, which means whenever you use Wiktionary's content, you have to attribute wherever you got that content from. Wikidata is CC0. And a lot of um, third party applications prefer this model because they can actually just consume the information and not have to do anything to to, uh, to reference where it's coming from. So going back to the top, dictionaries are plain text. They are not structured data, which means it's difficult to build tools on them. Um, it's difficult to have APIs connect with dictionary, which is not the case for Wikidata. Our APIs are open and out there for people to use. And um, Wikidata can be used to support other Wikimedia projects, including the dictionaries in the various languages, if they do want to use Lexin on Wikidata. So um, I'll skip this next slide because it's not that interesting. And talk about what we can achieve with Lexins. So I've been rambling about how we should how the things are important, what well, we can do with it. And um, one of the practical use cases is that, like SAMES, can be used to support the Wikimedia projects, but also dictionaries themselves. Um, they can be used to build dictionary applications. Next slide. And they can be used to build language learning tools. There are a whole lot of them. Um, and potential users of those tools include Duolingo. You know, you can use them to do research. They can be used for text analysis as well, to analyze, you know, the different parts of speech. And then for text generation, um, as we will soon be saying with Abstract Wikipedia, which was launched in July this year, if you haven't heard, Abstract Wikipedia is live in beta mode. You should go check it out. Um, and oh, for, for people who don't know what Alpha Wikipedia is, so is this new wiki that Danny Brandership started, which is um, a wiki of functions, um, which the, the aim of the project is essentially to, uh, to create language independent Wikipedias using structured data that will ultimately come from Sorry, abstracts, abstracts, abstract Wikipedia. Okay, one last thing before we get into the fun parts of this. There was an interesting case where the Dagwani Wikimedians user group, um, I think it's on the next slide, they have a mission of um, documenting their language, you know, preserving it. And one of the ways that they thought to do that is to actually have um, a collection of all of the pronunciation of the root words of the language online. So they, they recorded 4,000 root words in the Bani, uploaded them to Wikimedia Commons, created Legs, um, like themes for each of these words, and then connected the common pronunciation to the lexemes using a Wikileaks property called pronunciation with you. And um, I think they went even further than that to record phrases, our 10,000 phrases, and that generated 
a combined 15 hours of spoken text, um, sorry, text speech data, which was later used by um, NLP Ghana, which is a natural language processing um, organization. They use that data, the audio and the text from Lexemes to create the very first um, natural languages speech recognition system for that band. So this was a very big deal because prior to this, the, there was no tool, there were no tools that the band speakers could actually use to do natural language processing. So that organization actually used Lexemes on Wikidata to generate um, the program for this tool. Uh, you can check it out. There's a link to the, to the paper that I included in the slide here. You can see and read more about it. So, um, oh, and just to mention one more thing. Next slide. They actually use a tool called Spell for Wiki. To do this, do, uh, to do this recording. So, if you want to do that for your own language, you can check out this tool. And there's another tool that Asaf was talking about yesterday called Lingua Libre, which can also be used to make audio recordings in your language. Okay. And so, next slide. Last slide, I have comments. So, <laughs> to truly enable meaningful applications, we actually need more data, more in-depth data. And we need more people like you to help us create that data. And that is my value proposition for you guys. Help us create more like scenes on Wikidata. So we can go a plethora of tools that can help our languages to develop and grow. And just to give you a gist of what is currently being done, so a few African languages uh, when Abstract Wikipedia was starting, they decided to work with a few languages. Among these languages were Hausa, Igbo, Darbani, which are African languages, which started off, um, started off as, you know, seed languages for this project. And at the moment, these three languages are actually doing very well in Africa. For example, Darbani has over 11,000 lexemes on Wikipedia. The next language that comes close is uh, Fula, which has about um, 8,000 lexemes. And there's the um, Igbo that has about 3,000 lexemes. Then there's Hausa that has about 1,600 lexemes. And it just keeps going down <laughs> that trajectory, which is not really good. So please, um, this is an opportunity for you to represent your languages and bring them to life with you <laughs> All right. So for this, for this, uh, the last 30 minutes that I have, next slide, I would like each and every one of us to make an attempt to either create a lexeme in your language or to find a lexeme that already exists in your language and add at least one or two statements to it. So at the end of the day, my goal is that everyone here makes at least five edits into the Lexemes namespace. I think that is an achievable goal for the next 23 minutes. Five <laughs> edits, just five edits. So okay. thank you so much. And my colleagues here are available. We can help you answer your questions. Um, if you need any help, we'll be going around to help you out. Thank you. Thanks for the yeah. well, we are to join the dashboard. Why have you broken that? Oh, that one. Yeah, I tried to fix it, but I couldn't. So just copy the whole thing, the whole thing without the. I'll show you what I did. So this is the QR code, and. Um, where you have to join the dashboard, you will find out that the URL, part of it is green, and the other part of it is not for some strange reason. Copy the entire thing and paste it in your browser. 
So, um, why is your browser? You are the browser? Ah. Yeah, you can also do the same things. Okay. So, when you go to wikidata.org, on the left pane, right under the random pages, no, under like Twitter file data, you would be able to see a link where you can create a new like same and where is you it? find random like sames, current and changes. And in case you are going to create a like same, um, it would ask you for the lemma. You can think of it like the which and it will ask you for the language in which you want to create a like same. And it would ask you for the lexical like category, which is the part of the So that represents that well, um, so like a non verb on the I know how the one can I use the like like language? The like okay, you have the root I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the so way way to use one, you want one so that I can use it and they bring them and they will just do something. Uh, let me see the way that I'll get so that I'll not have and the character before you press, you can just search and see what that word exists in your language. And the way you search for you search for like things, they are a bit different from how you search, search for items. Weekly data. For items, you simply just type the name of the item, right? The label. But for like things, you need to. I'm going to get a word in the brand so that when I'm going to search, when I click, when it comes out, everything like else so. will be and and so I look at it. The, the word. Okay, let's just make a short walk. So you can say work mm -hmm. English. Work so as a verb and mm -hmm. work as a verb. Yeah. So I want to open it so that I'll use it as a guide. Mm -hmm. I think we can follow here and then okay. Yeah. Maybe we so, can zoom in a little bit. Okay, zoom in for us. Okay. If you are searching for a lexeme, you start with capital L, then you bring your column and write the word. In your letter. yes, you can start with capital letter L mm -hmm. column, then the word in your language and search. If the word is there, it will appear. If it's not there, it will tell you to create a new lexicon. Mm -hmm. In order to stop, maybe to prevent us from repeating or creating duplicates. So this one already exists. So this is, yeah, this is already created in English. That is work. The language is English. Lexical category is now. Statements. The English is very standard, so at least I will narrow it to our end. Where we can... And show an example of... Uh, <laughs> Like a word in your language which already exists. The new language is already different. Yes, that was what I wanted to do, but because of our keyboard's difference, I wanted to type the I oh, have like different. Uh, yeah, we have the, the Latin words. If I'm going to search, I have to add some Latin words in my language. Like write it here. You have. I don't have that. Okay, okay, so let me China. let me okay, write let me like this. Okay. let me write, add the word in my language. So this is L. Um. Uh, Tumblr, which is work. So search and let's see what is there. So it doesn't exist. I can create it. So I specify the language here. Yes. So is it is it now right? Or, uh, what is the meaning of the tumbler? Walk. Yes, walk. Walk, walk. That would be fair, isn't it? 
it's exercise. Um, so there is kutambla is to walk. Tambla is walk. Just walk. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So you select your noun, but you have to check because you have the nouns there. <laughs> so that, this is the right yeah. one. Then you complete your mm -hmm. So that's finished. Okay. So now mm -hmm. that's the time the census. Mm -hmm. The census is telling about the meaning of it. So now go and add a sense and let me show you something and the sense so the language you add your language to you. i can also come and add that man if the man is is also called the one that way you know there are certain languages who have some kind of similarity things there so you can also means that i'll just like so now gloss what is the meaning of that word to work to work so how are you describing it in your language I have to write in my local language. Yes. So describe it. Here. Like in, for example, how would you describe the word "walk" in, uh, yes. in English? In English, yes. how would it be described? Um, you can just write "walk." Okay. So we will come to English to so add another sense so that even in it, God, you are so we don't understand the language. If the person speaks, we know that our language this is what we call "walk." Mm -hmm. So we publish it. To add another sense, which is another language. Eh? Yes. So write here in English. English so what is the meaning of it in English? To work. So write to work. And then publish it. So now let's go to the form. This is just a This is the uh, we have added the senses. Yes. Eh? So form, form, you know, we have present tense, past tense, mm -hmm. present future, and that So that is what we do here. Mm -hmm. So spelling variant, that is your language that is already there. Mm -hmm. So now representing, is it singular? So if it is singular, that you walk, then you put work here. Something here, then you come and say, over that is singular, plural, uh, present tense, all those things. Mm -hmm. So right now, let me ask uh, mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. Is it a present tense or past tense? Mm -hmm. it's, the one that can it's present tense. So write it here. Uh, I write present? No, just write the, the sentence or the statement, the word that is present. So we come back. Write present tense. So come out with some present tense. So we can go and publish it. So add another form. How I can join the example of this class. Yeah, the answer to the class. Yeah. So add another form. <laughs> now this way. Let's say the past tense. How do you write it? Mm. Your language. Um, okay. It depends now, okay? If it is like one person, you say, he, he walked, eh? he had tumbler. Okay. If they are many, they say, bad tumbler, they walked. So I write for one person. So you have tumbler. So present tense, past tense. So the one that you are for, is it past tense? Yeah, it's it not is. So you do here, you write past. So you come out yourself and look. So we're going to select your past and publish it. So that is the form. So we have other tenses. So I can add other tenses. We even have other yes. items that we can add, but as we have, start somewhere. Then. So I've, I've created one already. So, but I haven't joined the dashboard, uh, which is a bit uh, let me see from the slides. Yeah, the slides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, so, I'm going to 
Okay. So, what's the password for the I think 12, 10, because the, this started one, uh, one 10 minutes late. That's why I'm checking. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the flow of the conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. Ah, with her? Mm -hmm. I think at 12, 10. Yeah, I want to be the Yeah, yeah, again, the lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to find it. Yes. The first one. Okay. Which one? There. It was screwed up. Oh, um, I think the session in the main room, yeah, I <laughs> How are you doing? Mm, you have a session here? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Okay. So, okay. you remove the password. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah, that's I wanted nice. to just tell you. All right. So, uh, we are meeting today. I'm meeting Where? Yes. Just, okay. just okay. sit inside it. Okay. okay. Sounds good. I'll be there. All right. Thank you. Oh, that is fine. So Thank you. 
Uh, 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 I was searching for a word, but it exists in another language. It shows in another language. Yeah, like... Okay. Okay. You add uh, your language. You add in my language, it has a very high number of like so almost all the words are in the English language. Like in your language already, yeah? Yeah, we did a lot of projects. So, um, yeah, we are going, we are having uh, late lessons for Sadat. That's one hour. Then after that, we have one more session and then lunch. Okay, but uh, we started 10 minutes late. Mm. So, 